we wanted to talk about some uh, safety procedures with slighted buildings. Andy Altenberg is going to uh, talk us through that. Let's give it up for Andy. And remember, please fill out your uh, surveys when, he, when Andy's done. Appreciate you coming. Enjoy your day at the Pork Expo. Andy? Thank you. Uh, first off, I guess I'd like to thank JBS for sponsoring this. Um, there is some handouts out here for some of you that didn't get them. I'll just give some more. Um, maybe you can take notes if you want um, as we go with. Um, you guys got also. I'll leave some back here. But um, I, I've been doing this 20 some years now. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff in a lot of different states. Um, we started out pretty simple. I started Grouton Hog Barns back in the early 90s in our local area, working for anywhere from integrators to private private individuals. We've since then done go back. Since then we've done four thousand plus cattle barns all the way from just a single slat to completely redoing, going into the pit, redoing the posts, the beams, the slats. Um, I've got one crew right now working on an odd job that that they cap the pit at eight feet and then they put a two foot pit above it. So that's a, a capped floor and they have to demo all that and the guy just wants a slatted floor now. And unfortunately it's a 10 foot pit. So we do a lot of crazy things associated with pits. Not only the slats and beams, but primarily the slats and beams. Um, we have a lot of pictures in here. I literally have thousands and thousands of pictures and examples of different things that happen and why they happen. Um, we're based out of southern Minnesota and Louisville, but we went as far east as eastern Ohio. Uh, I've been as far west as north and south Dakota, eastern or western Nebraska, and as far south as, oh, I can't remember how far south here in Missouri we've went, but it was only a couple hundred miles off the southern border. Um, we've done a ton of stuff in a total of 12 different states. The main reason slats go bad is age. And what happens is, is if you can imagine the rebar, and it, it happens as a freeze-thaw effect. So all rebar will rust eventually. So, right. And what happens is, is it pushes the concrete or expands and cracks the concrete and the concrete falls off. Anytime you have that, it compromises the integrity of either the slat or the beam or lentil, whichever one you want to call it. Um, and the main thing you want to pay attention to is the bottom portion of your structure. The top is, is a telltale sign to look deeper. Um, typically, first reason we replace slats is age. My, my rule of thumb is 30 years, but we've replaced them anywhere from three months of age up to 50 years old and just about everywhere in between. But the most common is between uh, early 20s, maybe 23, 24 years old up until, you know, 28, 29, 30 years old, somewhere in that range. The second reason we replace slats is poor quality product um, or uh, stuff that somebody didn't put strong enough concrete in, Rebar wasn't placed properly, and what I mean by that, the rebar should be placed an inch, inch and a half up from the bottom of the structure. And unfortunately, not one of us in this room can tell where the rebar is placed when, it, when that stuff is delivered. Um, I can't even tell you, un unless we cut it apart and, and look, but that only tells us just that particular piece. It isn't, gonna, it isn't any guarantee that, that all them pieces are made the same. So. The slats that I recommend typically are based on that quality. There's unfortunately a, a company 30 miles away from my home that I dealt with a lot early on in my construction and in this business. 
and I absolutely won't work with them because they have such inconsistent product and such poor quality product. I've got guys calling me now that are nine, ten year old barns that they're having problems with their slats. And in my opinion, you shouldn't have problems with your slats. You're going to have some erosion problems around feeder pads, but really that's the only thing you should have a problem with. You shouldn't have slats failing or cracking. The third reason is when stuff is built. There's certain minimum requirements that all slat companies should tell you openly that should happen. Your slats need to be bearing, and what I mean by that, they need to be setting on two inches of your slat ledge or two inches of your beam or lentil. The, the beams or lentils need to be setting a minimum of three inches on the post or an end pocket. And nowadays, it kind of, there's a lot of people in the industry that recommend putting posts on your end wall rather than putting that end pocket in there. It's just cheap insurance. Every year for the last three to four years, we've put in 300 posts for that reason, because the construction crew thought, well, an inch or two in that end beam pocket is just fine. Well, then that beam fails, and they have a group of pegs go in. Matter of fact, we had one last year, about June, they were loading out the last group of hogs in that barn, and every one of them went in the pit because of that situation. It wasn't placed in the beam properly, and that barn's only eight or nine years old. It shouldn't have happened, in my opinion, but somebody okayed that. Um, so it's, you know, even new barn stuff, there's issues. Not a lot of it, but it can happen. These are kind of the first signs that I, that I uh, referred to is cracking on top and you'll start to see these lengthways cracks whoops, um, in a slat. All that tells me when I go to inspect the barn and we always inspect the barn when it's washed and clean and hopefully dry um, and I use a flashlight, usually an LED flashlight. The reason I do that, it amplifies the cracks. The cracks typically will stay wet or they'll be dirty. Um, but these will these will really show up even on a on a floor that doesn't look like it has many cracks. When you start paying attention, you'll be amazed at how many cracks are actually there. Here's a real real picture. You can see the, the cracks go all the way, you know, on top of that slat. And whoops, when you look in the opening, kind of at an angle more than likely the bottom of that slat has an, either an exposed rebar or there's concrete missing from it. This crack, like I said, in and of itself doesn't mean that slat's bad, but the reason it got marked bad with this X is there's stuff missing on the bottom. And that compromises the integrity. So it's, it's carrying a tension load. And all that tension load is carried by that bottom rod. So that's what compromises the integrity of this structure. I mean, and it could fail. I, me personally, I wouldn't say it's going to fail tomorrow, but I've had stuff look like this or not even that bad and fail tomorrow. But it's just paying attention to these telltale signs of, you know, different things that are going on in your barns or the barns you're taking care of. Here, too, is another example. The header will crack. And a lot of times, if you look at the slat, sorry. If you look in the slat when it's in your barn to look in these openings right here, typically that'll be cracked. What that tells me is that rod is starting to rust and expand. Um, that also is not a good situation. Um, in this next slide, it kind of goes back to the last the what slide before that, but there's a crack here. You can see the crack here, but then you can also see the crack for some reason it wants to go automatic. You can see the crack here, but then you can see it fell off. And if this was a little bit brighter, there's actually a rebar right there. So in my opinion, that rebar was too close when it was actually made. So it prematurely rusted and cracked and then compromised the integrity of this particular slat. Here's another example of the header issue. Um, 
like I say, it's just another telltale sign to investigate a little further. This is a picture of action, whoops, of that last picture of the slat. This is after we pulled it out because we're cutting it in half um, to take it out because we're just doing random slats in that barn. We only did, I think, 10 or 12 in that particular, particular barn. Um, but this end, a lot of times, will fall out. And you can see this rebar is way too long, and it, it should be up. You know, it should be placed a little bit up. Like I said, it should be an inch, inch and a half off the bottom. And this particular feature here, the concrete isn't missing. That's just the way the slats cast. And every, every company has their own little telltale signs and signatures, if you will, of the way they make them. Typically, I can tell you just by looking at a slat, who made it, and there's different variations. Um, they've changed over the years with their different forms and stuff like that. Um, this kind of refers to like that last slat. These particular barns, not all of them were bad. It was just randoms. Just randoms. You can obviously see this slat is horrible. You know, there's another rail missing there. But this particular slat, there's no cracks in it whatsoever. So this particular barn was a shallow pit barn. Um, it was a huge site down in uh, Iowa. Some of these barns would have five slats in them and the next barn would have 50 slats in them. What I attributed that to is just poor manufacturing quality because you were seeing random slats for whatever reason in those barns and there was no logic to it. You know, It wasn't an age thing. These barns at that time were 14 to 15 years old. Um, and it was about five years after that they went through and replaced all these slats in that particular site. Um, here again, some more cracks. They actually tried patching this, um, which is a good thing around your feeder pads. Um, it's very, very, very beneficial. The big thing you're trying to do with a patch or wear around your feeder pads because I've worked in hog barns, I've been around hogs most of my life, you're trying to protect the edge. This edge right here, you start to lose it, it starts to erode, you're going to have leg issues. And a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, I know there's some guys in this business that claim they're going to add life to your slats. In my opinion, that's total BS. Because these slats all go bad from the bottom up. It's the gases and the water and stuff like that that's impregnating these slats because they're all porous and getting to that rod and rusting. So that's the reason they all really go bad. The slats, the beams, the lentils. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't touch on it in this, this slideshow, but people with deep pits with the posts, the reason the posts don't go bad is the way they're loaded. So like I, like I explained, the beams and slats are taking a tension load. They do flex. Um, I've seen slats flex as much as half to three quarters of an inch under a load. Um, beams you really won't see flex at all, but they do. They're designed to. Um, but your post is taking a compression load. Even though it's down in the worst conditions of these three components, that's what concrete's designed to do basically forever. Matter of fact, I told you we did a barn that was 50 years old. Those posts were just fine. We beefed them up because the original design, they only had a six inch post. That barn was only designed for 200 pound pigs back then. You know, now we're raising them, what, high 200s, 300? So they just need a better, better bearing. So we beefed them up, is what we did in that particular situation. Here again, you know, it's, it's poor slat. Um, I, I still don't know why this slat failed, conclusively, I should say. Um, my personal opinion on this is it's poor quality cement. Um, because we ended up replacing this whole barn. The other thing you can see, these slats didn't have any sign of cracks on top of them. But as you can see right here, the dust shows the bottom of that slat is cracked. And we started walking through just paying attention to the bottoms 
and just about every one of these slats was had issues with the bottoms either falling out or they were cracked, even though there was no cracks on top of it. So don't be afraid if you're walking through a barn to, to look at that. You had a question? Okay. And that's the other thing, too. If anybody has a question at any time, feel free. I mean, that's if you have an instance that you're concerned about or anything like that, um, obviously I'll have time at the end, too, but don't hesitate to ask a question. And here's, I know we had a slide just like this previous, but it's just a good reminder. The bottom is, is the, the critical part. So this, yeah, if it was brighter, like I said, you can, you can see there's rod exposed there. So, um, you know, in this barn, when you start looking, there's, there's slats that have cracks in them, but not as, not as bad as this whole slat. So, and I know there's some issue too with guys worried about, you know, the sidewall stem walls poured on top of the slats when it comes time to, to replace them. Honestly, it's not that big a deal. Typically, there's only an overpour of an inch or two. Um, what we do is we come in with a saw, we'll back cut that a little bit as a relief, and pull that slat out. You know, and you, if, if, if you guys are you know, hard workers, which I've seen a lot of guys do it themselves. It's, you're, it's really easy to pull that slide out, cut it up in sections and take it out that way. But here is a prime example of leg issues. But, you know, this, this slat, there isn't much left. There's actually rebar right here. And you can see there's, there's a big chunks missing here. Um, but this is just excessively wore. Really poor, poor quality slat and it would be a prime candidate to have leg issues in. Um, here again is another example of a header that cracked and failed. Um, as you can see, the bottom, excuse me, sorry about that, the bottom is cracked in this particular slat. So, I guess, and I get this question quite often about slats as well. Um, I get asked this a lot at pork shows. How much, how much sag is too much sag? Oh, I gotta get back to it now. Oops. This particular barn has an inch and a half to two inches of sag. In my personal opinion, that's way too much. It's not uncommon to see a half an inch of sag in a slat. What happened probably at that time, the slat was a little bit too green. Um, the other thing I've seen is slats frozen, and then when you put pigs in them after a turn, you'll notice a half an inch of sag after them, even though they were flat when they were first installed. Um, I learned a, a hard example of this. We did four barns for a guy. We left. The slats looked beautiful. He called me after the first turn and said all my slats sagged. Um, and I always thought if concrete froze, it was garbage. Well, there's an old guy by us that's been in this business for almost 60 years. And what he said was a slat, if you take it out, most slat companies will set them for seven days inside if you have freezing temperatures. This particular company was setting them outside before that so the, the structure would freeze and it will not start curing until it gets back to 56 degrees ambient temperature. That's what concrete needs to cure out and it needs it for 28 days. So what happened, we put these frozen slats in, the barn heated back up when they put pigs in it, then the, the slats technically were still green, they sagged slightly, and then they, they were permanently sagged. Normally if you get sag, the initial sag and they won't slag, sag anymore. Um, an engineer would tell you these slats or a slat that sags a half an inch is failing. The reason he says that is in order for a slat to fail, the surface of it has to compress. So therefore, an engineer is correct on his definition, but I disagree with him because I've never seen a slat fail because it has sag in it. Um, 
they typically, with a half an inch, you'll get a good lifespan out of them. You'll get close to 30 years. I've seen slats sag a half an inch and be just fine. When you get more than that is concerning. Typically, they're not going to get their full 25, 30 years of life. Um, this particular barn, it's a four barn site. We replaced them, oh, it was about year 20. So, and the crazy thing was, is literally you walked in the first barn, they were all flat. It looked beautiful, just the way they're supposed to look as you got north, the worst they got. And we actually replaced the north barn first and worked our way back. The first barn, we actually replaced, I think, at year 25 on this site. And this is kind of probably hard to see. Unfortunately, I wish I had a brighter. Um, but this is looking in. This is how I go through and inspect beams. I don't get this close. I actually try to stand back on the slat and you shine your light in here. What I'm trying to do is just shine my light and look for a nice straight edge. But then you'll see there's cracks, numerous cracks in this beam. And there's actually a crack in this slat here and a crack in the slat there, even though you can't tell it from the surface. Here's another example of that cracked beam. It's, that's a huge issue. We're in the process of replacing it. This particular barn had single slats in it. Um, the other thing is, is this, to me, only looks like it's about two inches on that post. As I said before, this needs to be a minimum of three. Even though it's not centered, you know, centering isn't the huge issue here. It's the three inches minimum. Here's a prime example of that last photo. Um, unfortunately, this particular guy said, yeah, this, this one slat, this one slat over here um, had a drop in it. It had a drop of about an inch. He knew that for 12 years and didn't call us and tell us or even try to do something himself even. But he didn't do anything until this beam actually failed. It slid off the post. He ended up with about 40 or 50 head of pigs in the pit because these two slats failed. And all that's holding these slats up is all this gating. This, this lentil or beam is totally missing out from underneath this structure. So, and it would have been a, a really simple fix if he would have called us within them 12 years, unfortunately. He did not. Um, this too, when we're doing an inspection, looking down through the slats, we're looking at the condition of these posts. Um, sometimes we'll see a, a crack out of the edge of this, this post. Sometimes we'll see rebar sticking out. Um, this particular one, I think the rebar is probably pretty close right there. And any of this structure, when the rebar isn't embedded deep enough, you will get premature rusting, and then you'll end up with cracks in the meantime. Um, some of these, I've seen, the worst post I've ever seen to date, there was a chunk missing, just about half the post was gone. So, there again, um, it's, it's the guys that poured the post. Not, you know, even though these beams are, these beams are bad, typically we see bad posts and good beams and good slats. These are just another examples of cracks. These type of cracks are not uncommon in a barn. If, if you see this in your barn, I wouldn't get very concerned. These are just, just like the surface cracks in your slats. These are just the telltale signs of a crack starting. It doesn't get worrisome until you start seeing a crack travel the length. And like I say, this compromises the the tension load or the load carrying capability of that structure. Oops. This is kind of hard to see, but if you can see, this is a piece of rebar that's actually hanging out of this beam. Um, you can kind of tell it starts right here, but you can see the rest is missing about an inch. And if you stood back on the slat, looking at it with a, a bright light, you can see this by standing on the surface. 
The one thing is, is we, we never get in a pit to inspect it. We know we're not going to see 100% of everything going on in this floor, but I add about 10% when I start seeing issues. So if I've seen one of these, I assume there's probably another one in here somewhere. But typically when you see one, you're going to see probably 10, atypically in a barn when you start looking. This, this is kind of how I take it. The photo is taken kind of as me looking at a beam. You know, I, whoops. This is how I look. Stand about this distance back on the slat, looking at the beams, looking for a straight edge, and you can tell there's actually a crack right there in that beam. The big thing when you look at beams, you want to make sure you look at both sides. Um, that last picture that showed the rod, I've seen where you can see rod hanging down on the one side. You look at the other side, it looks like a brand new beam. Um, there again, on that particular instance, the rod was too close to that edge. This is an example of new stuff. Pigs were only in this particular barn three weeks. There was only 40 pound pigs on that barn. And like I said, this, this beam, you can see it's cracked right there had one three-eighths of an inch rod, piece of rod in it. It should have five rebar in it. There should be three rebar in the bottom, and different manufacturers put different stuff in there. Typically, it's five-eighths rod, and then they'll put two half-inch rod in the top, and then they'll, what they'll do is they'll actually wrap it with chairs, and the more, more chairs they have in it, the, str the stronger it is, and it, it'll, it'll have less flex, but, we ended up changing all these slats out of these two big barns. These were two barns that were 100 by 200, like I said, and they only had pigs in them for three weeks initially. So the contractor actually paid for this. Um, he had bought some slats from a company that went out of business. Well, I got a pretty good idea why they went out of business. This here is a really good example of a newer barn issue. Um, we see a lot of times that this beam isn't properly placed or all the way in that beam pocket and you'll have this issue. They'll only put it in there an inch, inch and a half, maybe a half an inch. You won't know this until it drops. We've got a little gauge we've made. We can drop back in there and figure out if this is placed properly. Um, but a lot of people don't think about a new barn. You know, you build a new barn you expect it to last for quite some time. Um, and then you'll have this issue. A lot of times what will happen typically happens here is it will drop an inch, inch and a half and you'll get a slat that rocks or you know as, as this shows you'll have a slap that I call a toe kicker. Say you're doing chores in a barn every day and all of a sudden you're tripping over a slat. Pay really close attention to that because it'll be a situation like this. We get up calls like this and they'll claim that their beam is bad and it's actually a placement issue because it happens out here too. But a majority of new barn stuff, the biggest issue is on them end walls. And like I said, the biggest recommendation, and a lot of new builders have started to do this, is put a post right here. It'll catch that every time. And just, just the crew, you know, just the crew needs some supervision there too, you know. Here again, whoops. Here again is poor placement. You know, it's not only poorly placed here, but you can see this, this post is chipped away here. This in and of itself, there's still a good, you know, it's about a, I would say a 12 inch post. It might be a 14 inch post. So there's more than enough area yet, even with this chip, to place it on there properly. And as I said about toe kickers, you know, this is a prime example of that. It's, it's dropped, and they'll typically drop between an inch and three inches. It seems like three inches is the threshold um, before they actually totally drop in the pit. What will happen is it'll drop, and then it'll start pushing that post over, and as there's more weight on it, it'll actually push the post over, and then it'll, it'll actually slide down the edge of the post and totally fail. So and then you have a big, big mess. Um, but these are huge. A lot of people don't, 
don't give them enough, enough attention when they do happen. Here's just another example. It just happens to be in the alleyway. Um, you can see that the grout's cracked, and it's a fresh crack. Um, you know, and this one's dropped, I would say, an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there. And this, this is unusual. Typically when there's a failure, only one beam will go, but it was a quite old barn. Um, from what I recall, it was probably 28 or 29 years old. These slats are actually 12 feet long, and the lentils were tens. Um, and this is actually fencing. Um, it, it looks like a goofy slat to some people, but um, there was two beams that failed, and the actual hole in this barn was 12 by 30. The biggest failure we've ever fixed to date was in a farrowing, actually a gestation barn, but a farrowing situation. Um, the pumpers were actually pumping in the pit. There was divide walls in the pit, you know, to contain it down to four pits rather than one large one. Um, and the, the divide wall failed. That hole, when we walked into it, was 24 feet across and, and 50 foot long. So, and there was crates and everything else in there that went in the pit. If I never see one of them again, it'll be way too soon. Um, I've just never seen devastation like that in my life, nor do I care to again. Um, but they fixed the problem. The problem in that situation was, if you can imagine this, this being a pit, they actually poured a divide wall right here. Um, anytime I've seen a divide wall poured, they usually eliminate a row of posts and pour that wall, and then they'll lock that wall in with the slats. So they would have never had that issue if they would have done that. But this was a, this particular situation. It was a 10-foot deep pit. They poured an 8-foot freestanding wall. The secondary issue was they had a cold joint dead center in that pit. So that was the weakest point, and it actually pushed it over from all the hydraulic pressure um, and let loose. And then what it did is it actually, the wall, if, the, if you can imagine the wall being here, it pushed all these posts over when it failed. So here um, is a good example. Back in the day there was no standard and this is a beef cattle barn. Um, you can tell these beams are two foot thick. An atypical barn now is anywhere from eight inches thick to up, most commons eight to ten inches thick. There's some in our area that are as much as 12 inches. There was a manufacturer early on in our area that made 16 inch thick beams. Because they're thicker, doesn't really mean that they're gonna last longer. Predominantly in southern Minnesota, we have five inch thick hog slats. They don't last any longer than a four inch, if they're properly made. So I've seen five inch fail way before four inch, but they were improperly made. So this beam failed. And actually this situation was um, this particular company made um, very long beams. I want to say they made 24 foot beams, but you can see the bottom is failing. And this one all in all failed. Um, but we ended up replacing the entire floor in this situation. Here's kind of a little bit different perspective. Um, this is a a pit and there's shallow pits there's shallow pits back in here this dumps into this pit and there's a there's a lift pump that takes it out to an outside lagoon there was a guy standing right here and walked back here to this door as soon as he stepped through that door this failed this is a really odd situation because you, you can't see it right here but this isn't concrete this is a steel I-beam underneath this floor. Steel I-beams, from what I've seen, and I've only seen it probably a dozen times, only last about 10 years because of the, the stuff that they're susceptible to. The webbing fails, and they'll collapse and fail. Um, I've seen wood beams and stuff. I've seen uh, port-in-place stuff, which is very unusual, but back in the day, that's the way they did it. 
This here is an example I referenced it a little bit. This was actually the last group of pigs coming out of this barn. It's a double wide. Um, here was a placement issue on the end wall. That beam failed. Like I said, it was the last group coming out. And there was 30 head of pigs in this pit. Fortunately, the guy getting them out the barn was back here when it happened. And he didn't get hurt or anything like that, thankfully. I can't say as much for the hogs, but... Here's just, yeah, like I say, it's a good reminder to inspect floors. And that is one thing we do as a company. We do come do inspections. Um, if we're just coming by and your barn's washed up, we don't charge for it. If you want a detailed inspection, as you've seen some of the illustrations, we actually put out a CAD drawing. And our thinking is that you sell the barns, you can give that to the next owner, and you can say, well, we came and looked at them in 2019, January 10th, for example, and this beam had a crack. So you yourself can walk back to that same location, your son, or if you sell the barns to another individual, they can walk back to them and say, hey, we knew there was a crack here. Is it getting any worse? That way you can pay attention to these floors just like you would your tin, your equipment, anything like that. Here's another, it's actually a beam feather, it wasn't at the door, but yeah, this whole pen of pegs went in the pit. And that was, that was a placement issue. Here's a little bit different situation. Um, I don't know, hopefully you guys don't have this problem, but up by us, it, winter building is, is hard to do up in our area. Um, dang it. This particular site, they didn't put any water in the pit. The water is designed, or the, the idea behind the water is to keep the floor from heaving. So when we had two weeks ago, well, it doesn't even take 60 below winters, but we can get this when it's 10 below or so. What happened is this floor heaved right here. In that, it pushed this wall out. Um, believe it or not, and that's why all these slats are in the pit. By the time it got done moving, we ended up replacing three quarters of this row of slats. Just because the farmer refused to put, put water in the pit, and water, what, what the water does is it put pressure on top of the floor. That way it doesn't prevent it from heaving, but it gives it a better chance from heaving. So this is just a a really unfortunate thing that could have been prevented just by putting some water in the pit. I know you have to haul the water out, but it's better than this situation. This was a big headache. This even went into a lawsuit, as far as I know, who was going to fix it, how they were going to fix it, to get it fixed right, because there was actually a crack in the floor, just about the length of this. And then when it came to the corners down in the corner of the pit, that was cracked as well, where the wall moved. So all that has to be resealed. Here's kind of a different angle of that other pit. You can see the lift pump. And like I said, this guy was standing at this, this workbench just before that failed. I mean, he literally walked off of that, heard a big bang, and it all failed. Here you can kind of see a little bit better that there is a steel I-beam underneath this. And what they did is they just placed steel I-beams and then they poured concrete on top of it. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on things to watch for, not only new barns but old barns. If you have any questions or examples that you have that I can answer, I'd be way, way happy to do that if anybody does. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have anything more for you. <laughs> you take a few questions? Yes, absolutely. Does anybody have questions? 
And ultimately, I, I do have cards in my booth. You know, if you'd rather not ask them in the open, I'm only a phone call away. 99% of the time, I can kind of diagnose what you have going on. Myself, I have Tyler as my, my projects manager. He's out in Ohio right now. And then I have two guys at home that take questions all day long. So I just want to prevent anybody from getting hurt or losing animals, you know, and, and hopefully that gives you some insight on them watching your own floors, you know. It is a critical piece of these barns, whether it's a shallow pit or a deep pit. So. Okay. Nobody's thought of a question or got got one they'd like to ask. Yes. I don't know how good of a question this is because I imagine it depends upon different situations. But uh, mm -hmm. how often, uh, say, from the time a newborn is built, should a guy start doing these inspections a little bit, kind of looking at things? In my opinion, if you don't see some of the the you know, the, the toe kickers and things like that, you know, if you're in the barns or if you've got a hired man, I would say you're 18 to 20 just to keep a good eye. The biggest thing is, is the telltale signs. That's, that's critical. So if you start to see cracks more and more in your floor, then do a little bit more investigating. If you're not sure of it, like I said, I'm only a phone call away. I'd be happy. Myself, Tyler, one of my other guys, come take a look for you, and that way you got a peace of mind. But after, you know, year 20, it just depends upon quality of slats, truly does. So, you know, it's been all over the board. I've seen poor things come out of Burlington years ago, Raider slats, we replaced a lot of them. Some of them down in this area, some in Illinois, some up in Iowa, that were only lasting 10 to 12 years. Obviously, I see the worst of the worst, but I know there's good Raider slats out there. So, you know, it's, and some of that I attribute to, you know, it was poured on a Friday maybe or a poor quality batch of cement that particular day or that pour sometimes. So, but that's why I say, you know, the telltale signs, watch for cracking, you know, especially on the surface and anything that seems to be moving. You know, if you see that, then. What are you talking about cracking? Are you talking about even like hairline cracks? Or Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's why I use a flashlight. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my flashlight in, but I've got a real little DeWalt flashlight that's LED. Usually when I go and inspect, I'll turn all the lights off, and that way these cracks show up. They'll, you know, a lot of times I've had guys where, well, I didn't think there's many cracks in my floor, but, you know, you start walking around with a flashlight and paying attention to it, there's cracks. You know, like I say, it's just the onset of this stuff happening. You know, that, and a lot of slat manufacturers have two mats of rebar in there. So when you see the, the top crack, what that tells me is that top rod is starting to rust. Not always is the bottom rod rusting already, but when you see severe cracks like I showed you on some of the slides, usually it's more times than not the bottom starting to crack too. Mm -hmm. Just replace the slat, no. or is there something you can do to repair it? Yep, that? patching. Patching is a good solution. You're, you're not going to um, totally quit you know, the rebar from rusting. It's still going to rust because the reason it rusts is that, that concrete, you know, a lot of people think it's solid. It's actually porous. So it you know, absorbs moisture, absorbs, you know, the, the really hard thing on these slats is hydrogen sulfide and that's one of the gases that's in the pit that is really really bad on this stuff because if it mixes with with water you've got sulfuric acid and I've actually seen where they people have a solid floor that it's just a holding tank and the one locally actually blew up um, there was so much methane there and hydro, well, the hydrogen sulfide won't explode, but they had a, a fan on it. The fan shorted out and actually took 12-foot solid slats. They weigh about 2,300 pounds. It set them right one on top of the other. It, it moved them about six inches, believe it or not. They had no idea. 
it must have happened in the middle of the night, thankfully, but it, it wasn't on a barn, and you, you won't see that on a barn. Typically, you don't see a lot of explosions. I mean, I have seen some when you got excessive foaming and stuff like that, because all those gases will stay on top of that foam. Typically, all them gases are heavy, so they'll stay just above, you know, whatever manure level it's at. But if there happens to be gas or foam in there, it's not only mixed in with that, but it also tends to hover above the foam level. So, yes, go ahead. Mm hmm Yep, there's there's companies out there who will do it. You know, there's Vanberg products that, that we've used and I recommend. Um, the biggest thing I see with any type of coating is a lot of people don't follow the directions. That's why it tends to fail. This time of the year is a poor time of the year to put any type of coating on. Ideally, you want to put coatings on whether it's a cementitious or a cement-based product or an epoxy-based product. What you want is 70 degree weather is ideal. Um, you'll have better luck with it at that temperature. So you have a short window of when to really put this stuff on. If it's freezing at night, you know, if, if you keep your barns heated properly and it stays above that 60 degrees and that's 60 degrees at the slat, then you won't have failure rates. But you also need to acid etch it, you know, and clean it up if it's in a used situation. In a new barn situation, the right way to do it is you come in and grind the slat to get that, that top cream off and then you apply the coating. You'll have better luck with it doing that. So they're just the way I see a lot of failures. We don't do a lot of coatings, you know, because we're so busy with the slat replacement part of it. But we have done it a lot of, over the years. So, um, but it, it's it's worth its weight in gold, in my opinion. Whether it's it's a small crack, you know, sometimes, you know, you swear you put it down. This turn, it's gone next turn. Well, that stuff is a prime example. You kind of get what you pay for. If you spend more money, typically you're going to get a product that should last 10 years. If you, if you get the cheapest one, it might last a turn. It might last a year. You know, it's, it's, there's so much variability in that stuff because of the quality of ingredients that goes into it. So.